Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Top Gun, we are following Meg Ryan to inner space. In inner space, we are going to follow Dennis Quaid to the right stuff. Right stuff, we are following Ed Harris to Apollo 13. Bill Paxton from Apollo 13 to a Predator 2. Then uh, Adam Baldwin to Independence Day. Los Angeles, 1997. It's the hottest summer on record. Pollution is choking the city. The gangs control the streets. It has not been a nice day! As bad as things are, they're about to get worse. Much worse. Whoever did this took out four men armed with machine guns by hand. Whoever killed him is going to pay. I'm going to finish it. You don't know what you're dealing with. Other world life forms drawn by heat and conflict. He's on safari. Lions. Tigers. The bears. Ah! Oh, my. Danny Glover. Gary Busey, Ruben Blades, Maria Conchita Alonso, Bill Paxton. Predator 2. He's in town with a few days to kill this Thanksgiving. Why does it feel like somebody's watching me? Oh shit, it's a predator. You're you're a creep, Tom. Nobody likes you. Go away. Okay. <laughs> Sad Charlie Brown music. Hello, bots and listeners, but mostly bots. It's the Fire Pit Podcast 10th anniversary. 10th um, episode, uh, yeah. Dan. 10th ten episode. Ten Hold on, let me check. The okay. Yes, well, 10th episode. I'm Dan, British name Nigel, and last week we watched the amazing film, Apollo 13, uh, seeing Tom Hanks, Bill Paxton, and the always there, except in the movie Hollow Man, Kevin Bacon, play astronauts Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert, respectively. Respectfully, Dan. Don't you have an English degree? Yes, yes, I do. That's it's why it's respectfully. Well, I don't. So, anyways, they were working to get home safely from an ill-fated trip to the moon, <laughs> and as per our rules this month, we've taken an actor from that movie and moved on down through the road to Independence Day. Actually, this is the last stop to the. Well, no, this is the second to last stop. Yeah. It, 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 Day. So, if uh, if you gotta go, go. And uh, smoke them while you got them, because next week is the is Independence Day. So, uh, but to, here to tell us about what we're watching and who we're watching tonight on the final rest stop before ID four. That kind of rhymed. Uh, I turn it over to Josh. <laughs> well, thank you, Dan. I'm uh, Josh, British name Reginald, and tonight we are following the ever famous Bill Paxton from Apollo thirteen to Lethal Weapon versus Predator. Uh, uh, technically. Starring Danny Glover <laughs> playing R Roger Murtaugh, not really, is taking the invisible alien hunter of the same species that gave Arnold and Apollo Creed hell back in 1987. This movie takes the, the action from the forest jungle to the urban jungle in the far off future of 1997. Oh boy. I know. <laughs> Remember when uh, Demolition Man did the same thing, but it kicked off from the far off future of 1998? Right. Yeah. I va yeah. vaguely uh, remember that, yes. Or or the movie 2012 that came out 10 years ago, but took place eight years ago. <laughs> Anywho, to give us the rundown of this week's film, I hand it over to you, Thompson. 
Well, thank you very much, Josh. I am Thompson, American name Tom. And as mentioned a few times, we're watching Predator 2. Uh, again, this film stars Bill Paxton, Gary Busey, Adam Baldwin, uh, Maria Contita Alonso, who will start next to Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Running Man. And um, as mentioned before, Danny Glover. And honestly, you guys need to look up his IMDb page sometime because this guy has been in practically everything. Just TV and film combined, he has been in 201 things. Who's this again? Danny Glover. Did oh, I say wow. Arnold? Did, no, did you I... said Danny. No, you said Danny. I just, I didn't realize Danny Glover's been in that much right. stuff. Uh, but no, yeah, no. He, Danny Glover has been in an impressive amount of things. Now, granted, not all of them have been very good. There was a film he did um, with, um, oh God, now I can't remember his name. He was, uh, you think I'm funny? Um, he, uh, uh, oh God. Joe Pesci, thank you. Uh, he with uh, and it was less said about that film the better, but he has been in so many films. But this one, as you know, he essentially does, as Josh noted, he does essentially play not Murtaugh. not yeah, not Roger not, Murtaugh. Not Murtaugh. That's what Lieutenant, I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lieutenant, not Murtaugh, my Kerrigan. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this film uh, actually had a budget of thirty-five million nineteen nineties dollars. And had a worldwide uh, gross of over fifty-seven million, though its American was only thirty million dollars. So uh, it was a flop by pre-Chinese standards, which probably explains why there were no other Predator sequels until Alien vs. Predator in um, two thousand four. Uh, yeah, two thousand four. Yes. Alien. So, so yeah, because this movie was kind of a, a disappointment. Um, there were no future Predator movies made after. So you it. could you could effectively say that Predator Two killed the Predator franchise. Okay, Josh, go back. Go, 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 go leave. I would say it drove him away for a little while. I wouldn't say it killed it. Yeah. Um, well, it, this this film only made eight, a little more than eight million its opening weekend. It was a Thanksgiving four day weekend. It lost to sibling rivalry by wow. double digits. Wow. And this double got, digits. And which that's kind of amazing because I don't remember this movie being that bad. I haven't oh, seen no. it in, I haven't seen it in its entirety in a long time, but I don't remember this movie being that bad. But the fact that it lost to sibling rivalry is just mind-blowing, especially when you look at the cast. Danny Glover, Gary Busey, Bill Paxton, like yeah, and consider it took this film w- took eight weeks to make four weeks for filming, four weeks for editing. So they had to film and edit at the same time they were making this. The studio oh my god, no time! And the fact that it did, mm-hmm. and they filmed in LA, which arguably, just reading some of the facts about this, it's like you know, those this is one of those the times that we live in like a snapshot of America when it was happening. This was early nineties. So like still kind of eighties America, mm-hmm. um, you know, where the film uh, cities like LA and New York is like these high. Right, this low- movie takes place in 1997, Tom. It yeah, does, but, but it was filmed was in filmed. 1990. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you know, still it's, had- it's weird about that because predator came out in 87. You think if you're going to make a franchise out of it, you're going to, you're not going to make a movie in eight weeks, three years later. Well, I, that, that, see, that just brings me to, you know, a, a, a topic of, you will see stuff like this. This is something that happens a lot, especially in the late eighties, the early nineties with these quote unquote blockbuster movies where the studios did everything they could to try to make their franchises fail. You really should read about what the hell happened to the He-Man movie masters of the universe. Oh, if, that, yeah. if that movie was being made today, it, the studio would be throwing $250 million at it to, just to start with. They'd be getting a big time director like like a Michael Bay or even a Steven Spielberg. They'd be throwing money at somebody to come direct this movie. It would get yeah. top notch special effects. They would try to get well if that movie if He Man was as popular now as it was back then. But like you read like like He Man was a million dollar 
maybe a billion dollar franchise back then. And they kept cutting the budget for that movie. They kept mm-hmm. cutting it and cutting it and cutting it and cutting it. And to the point where like, they didn't, couldn't even film the last scene with lights on. That's why he man and Skeletor's final sword fights in the dark because they, they turned the lights off. They really? Turned, they I turned thought it, that was, I mean, I thought it was just going for the atmosphere that, wow. They Holy turned the lights cow. off. They were also the reason why, why He-Man and Skeletor's final sword fight is only confined to a small little space. It's because they tore down 75% of the set. So they couldn't even sword fight all over the set like they wanted to. They had this big elaborate, like final battle scene kind of like, uh, you know, planned. And all of a sudden the studio's like, no, nah, we're, you guys are, we're done. Just give us what you got and you're done. And you're like, are you kidding me? And so it doesn't shock me that, Predator 1 was this huge success, big movie, big popularity, Arnold Schwarzenegger, all that good stuff. They do a sequel, and I get it. Arnold doesn't want to come back because he didn't want to do franchise films. So mm-hmm. Plus, this he is... was doing another film at the time, and he didn't like the director, uh, Stephen Hopkins, who did uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 5. Um, he didn't like the script or the, st- you know, the director. So he yeah. said, uh, I will do something else. I am Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger. Yeah, and, and, and Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger impression, by the way. And in Arnold's defense, just a year later, or a couple, a year or two later, he would do a relatively unknown movie called Terminator Two. But <laughs> <laughs> a year later, let's see, 1990, he uh, has two starring roles: Tales from the Crypt as ex-con slash Arnold Schwarzenegger, uncredited, and uh, the hit cop drama Kindergarten Cop. Really. Yeah, because I read he actually turned this down to do. Oh, and Total, Total Recall. Recall. Yeah, Total Recall was the one he turned down to do this. Yeah, those movies both came I out. Right here. He turned down this film to do that film, which yeah, yeah that was about. But right. I, but I get that that Arnold's not coming back. But the first movie was a big success, and yet they gave this movie a quarter of the budget and told him that you have to shoot it in eight weeks and edit it at the same time, like. So you it, want this to fail? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Because it sounds like you want this to fail. Well, this film had so many reasons to fail, too. Like, uh, they found dead bodies in the alleyways they were filming in. and That's right, wouldn't they? They did. And, like, the people around them did not care. The, the people in that neighborhood were more pissed off about the filming of the film than the dead bodies they wow. were finding. Because this was Reagan's America. Uh, and also Bush. Yeah, I was gonna say 1990. It's Bush's America, but yeah. it's just so it's it's so just so weird hearing about these franchises. But because like you, the, around the same time as this, because um, this movie was coming out, um, the hell of pre-production that became the hell of movie that is Alien Three mm-hmm. um, was being produced. And if you read about the story of Alien Three. It's like, you guys have got this multi-million dollar franchise. Why are you doing this? I think it falls under the uh, category of we need to invest minimum amount of money because we think the name is going to bring in so much money. So Mm -hmm. we don't have to put in so as much money as we did before. The name alone is going to bring it in. That's why all those like movies that came out in that era, they were garbage, like Mario Brothers, right? Too much, too many, too many. There is such a thing as too many cooks in the kitchen. And... Yeah, it's like, well, guys, the Mario Brothers name is going to bring it in. Just make something. Yeah, these video game nerds are idiots. They'll just watch anything. Yeah, because it's like, what was it, Mortal Kombat? That that they, that was an unexpected hit. Everybody's like, oh my god, that movie's so good. And mm-hmm. then it's like the sequel came out, and they're just like, well, the oh name. Oh my god, gonna it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, the name's going to get people in the door, so we don't need to focus so much on advertising or anything else. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. assume everyone's idiots. Yeah, yeah and it's they, frustrating. They assume, it's and like also, they already yeah. assume that people are going to buy tickets to the movie because it's got the name Mortal Kombat or whatever. Yeah. Or that's also why they didn't want to. That's also why they didn't want to do too much character development in the Mortal Kombat sequel because they thought that well, most people just go to the arcade and they pick their favorite character. They don't even care about his or her backstory, and they just play as that character. And okay, that's fine, but. The arcade, a, a video game is a little bit different than a movie. If I'm going to the arcade to play Mortal Kombat, yeah, I'm putting in a couple of quarters and I'm going to play Mortal Kombat and I'm going to pick the best character that I that I can use because I want to get the maximum amount of money or time that I can get for my quarter. Whereas yeah. in the movie, I'm not, a movie isn't just put a quarter in and then play for uh, 10, 20 minutes and then you're done. Mm-hmm. A movie, you need to develop the characters because 
if I'm halfway through the film and I don't know what the hell's going on and I don't know any of the characters, I don't care about anything else in the movie because I don't care about the characters. And arguably, um, it's, it's, yeah, it's Murtaugh from Lethal Weapon versus Predator. People are going to want to see this film. Yeah, because I mean, we Lethal Weapon was pretty huge at the time, wasn't it? Yes, Lethal it was. Weapon, uh, Lethal Weapon 2 just came out. Lethal Weapon 3 didn't wasn't supposed to come out until when, like... Uh, well, this was still when Gary Busey was a big actor, too. He hadn't quite gone completely off the rails yet. So, yeah, you know, and he was in the trailers. He was featured pretty prominently yeah, Lethal in the Weapon trailers. Three came out in 92. Lethal Weapon 87. Lethal Weapon 2, 80. So, yeah, he's right off the coattails of Lethal Weapon 2. It came out the year before. Yeah. So, again, he's writing that high of everything. But America didn't want to see it. I, I don't get it either. It's. I, I looked at what was big on that weekend, and you look like, how did this not make bank? I'm almost willing to bet, if we did some more digging on this, um, that you're going to find out that the studio probably didn't add, didn't sink a whole lot of money into advertising either. So right. it's that's possible. half the thing. Like from what I understand, you take the budget of the movie and you multiply that by two. Mm-hmm. And then, like, basically, you take the the budget of the movie and you put the same amount towards advertising. That's yeah. how, uh, like, but they don't count that towards the budget. That's just advertising budget, right? Hollywood Which, accounting. But yeah, uh, yeah, that's my understanding is you basically invest the same amount of the budget of the movie in an advertising, and that's why you get movies like Star Wars having Star Wars themed oranges, or Avatar getting TV spots in every single TV show that was on air at the time. Right. And yeah. In, in in today's environment, you know, when the, the Marvel movies were coming out, you see pop up ads for every Marvel film or you see Facebook ads for every Marvel film that's coming out and stuff like that. Just it's just mind boggling that these franchises back then that, you know, probably could have been really huge. Oh, yeah. I mean, if it, Predator it is, came out today, they would already have three movies. Like, let me rephrase. If Predator, a.k.a. a new series, new franchise was premiering today. If it was as successful now as Predator 1 was successful back when it came out, they would already have three sequels lined up. Huge-ass budgets and advertising budgets already lined up. Because, A, they now know that just because the name's good um, is going to get people in the door doesn't mean it's going to keep selling. They, we, they need repeat sales now, you know? Yeah, yeah, and what's funny is that this movie hinted that the Predators – had a rivalry with another really popular alien franchise that was yeah. around back then. And they did nothing with it for over 24 years or 14 years. They didn't do a thing with it for 14 years, except in comics and video games. It's like, and, where it was super those, successful. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. They, they were, I'm, it, I'm, I'm still, we, you, we've all seen. Okay, alien Tom, okay, Predator. How can they breathe, breathe, Tom. Sorry, you you, you hit a, a geek button on me here. That was breathe, Tom, Tom, Tom. Take a breath. Don't forget how to breathe. English, not you. Did have to go to school four extra years to learn how to speak it. Breathe, <laughs> breathe. <laughs> Fuck you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's this was um. This is a film that had a lot of problems going into it, not just lack of interest from the studios, but just having to deal with filming in the jungle of L.A. And it's Although, personally, uh, the fact that it happens in 1997, which is the same year that uh, Robocop is supposed to happen, so maybe Shared Universe uh, and or in this opportunity could have had a Robocop versus Predator. Say, I don't know about that, considering how the Predator fared against their actual rivals in their two movies that they were in together. I'm just kind of like, um, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. Like, if you know, if, if you'd have told nine year old Dan about after seeing Predator 2 that, yes, in the future they will make a Predator versus Alien movie and they will make a Freddy versus Jason movie and both of them are gonna suck, <laughs> he's like, wait, what? Yeah, what could have been, would have been, should have been. <sighs> but that, Dude, those are what are we thoughts. talking about? They still don't know what to do with big franchises. Wonder Woman and Aquaman made more money than a Batman and Superman movie. Because, again, overproduced. Overproduced. Like, you can say what you want. I, I, I think they're getting a little bad about it now. You can say what you want about the Marvel brand for that Disney owns the Marvel brand versus Disney owning Star Wars. Which one... Disney has their hands all over 
And which one do they kind of like say, eh, you guys are okay. I think you guys can handle it on your own. Exactly. Marvel, the Marvel movies for the most part have been able to follow their own story and do a lot of their own things and get a lot of the, and get directors that tell a good story and make characters that you can care about. And then Disney comes up with, or I mean, Star Wars comes up with three really forgettable movies in a trilogy, one decent film in uh, Rogue One, and a, a forgettable solo movie that really nobody wanted. Like, but a yeah. good TV series. A good and TV good series. Animated. But the TV series is good because Disney didn't have their hands all over it. Dude, now, no. But now that it's been successful, I promise you they're going to be all over the, the Dude, For one, they're, the books are great with a minor exception. The TV shows are great, especially The Mandalorian and Rebels was awesome. Resistance yeah. was meh. It's like everything about the Disney produced Star Wars, if you take it, if give everything basically one point, they're doing good with it. It's just the movies. It's like they went off on the back porch and they put the carboy in the hot carboy in the cold ice water. Yeah. It's like they, they... <laughs> For those of you who don't get the joke, <laughs> I lost a lot of money that night. Yes, you did. Because we forgot basic laws of thermodynamics. <laughs> Let's take this 100 plus degree boiling liquid and glass and shove it in ice water. Nothing bad will happen, except you'll lose $100 worth of honey. <laughs> hey, hey, Josh, shouldn't you have a lot more mead inside this carboy before we put oh, it into I'm the ice water? I'm the one who saw it. I'm like, that water level seems a little low. <laughs> I still remember what you grabbing it and mine? pulling it, and it's. <laughs> I still remember you grabbing and pulling it up, and it's uh, only half a right. carboy now. This is a. Uh, this is to our audience. This is uh, happened. <laughs> we were all very drunk, and educated <laughs> men were doing this, and and nobody, nobody was like, we shouldn't put that carboy in ice water. Well, we now, it, yeah. Yeah. Now our audience knows why we're doing a movie-based podcast and Instead not a podcast on how to brew your own beer. Yeah. Or science. <laughs> this was like 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Because when you have alcohol, you forget basic laws of thermodynamics. Anywho. <laughs> Anywho. But that's, yeah, that's all the points I had. Yeah, again. Um, so... It's been a long time since I've seen this film. Honestly, I would Same. love to see a, a, a director's or original cut of this because they had to cut this film like six times to get it down from an NC-17 rating. This was a, one of the first films to get an NC-17 on violence. It was yeah, I remember so reading graphic. about that. Yeah. That's the same so. thing with Alien 3. Every like From what I understand, the original Alien 3 uh, budget was like script was amazing it was supposed to be like on earth and fighting and shit and underground battles and shit but and, and they kept someone... cutting the budget until they're like oh fuck it let's just return to formula and do something like we did in the first one but make ripley pregnant or something yeah but we'll come to that film at some point in the future i am sure but for so, now for now um i i have a surprise for our listeners um because of our continued success in the podcast realm, because we are now easily one of the most listened to podcasts in the county of Green of Ohio. Yeah. Uh, we have a special guest contacting us tonight via Zoom. Now, uh, uh, let, let me go ahead and introduce him. Uh, we have uh, Gary Busey with us now today. Hey, Gary, go ahead and say hi. Uh, Josh, we're on Skype, not Zoom. Shit. Is that why he can't hear me? He's just kind of waving around and looking at me. Gary, can you see me? He's waving. Now he's drinking something. No, it's yeah, I'm assuming it's lemonade because I don't want it to be the other. Okay, he can hear me. He can hear me. I can't hear him though. Um so, uh I guess uh, do you want He's nodding yes. I didn't even ask a question, but he's nodding yes. Gary, um we're watching Predator. T I guess I can't ask him about it. Do you have anything to say about the movie? Haven't blinked once for yes, twice for no. Yes. No. Wait. Hang on. Okay, now he's just drinking the yellow lemonade again. Uh, 
Jerry, uh, so do you, I wish I could get it. Okay, hang on. No, um, do you have anything to motion? Okay, now he's just uh, waving his hands around. He's doing the finger in the whole thing with the hands. And now oh, he took oh. off his sock. He took off his sock. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Does, does he know who, who he's calling into, Josh? Does he, does he think you're, he's calling into something else? Is this, um... Do you know where you are at? He said, yeah, he wrote a thing, said, I'm not stupid, I can hear you. Um, but <laughs> you're on our podcast. Can, can you... And now he's just eating the sock. Um, take it out of your mouth, Gary. Okay, okay. I, I have no visibility on this. Um, try, try, can you try bribing him somehow? Is there, is there something have, you can d distract him with? I mean, I something bright. Hang on, hang on. I'm taking a ball. I'm doing that thing. And I'm like, I throw it. Okay, he ran off screen. Okay, he may yeah, be gone for a while. Ball. I don't see him. He came back for the drink and the sock. Okay, Gary. He's gone. Um, the audio's still on. So I'll let you know if he comes back or if he finds the ball. I highly doubt it. Gary Busey, friend of the show. Yes, Thank you, tried. Gary, for your continued support of the podcast. Yeah. Well, I only got him on here because I did bribe him with about $500. But it's cool. I just used Tom's credit cards. Oh, okay. Well, that's if you next want money, I literally bought him $500 worth of Pixie Sticks. Which, <laughs> that was flavored. Was There was an issue. So I just ended up buying him like five pounds of sugar. And he was okay with that. <laughs> well, it's Gary Busey, so this this all tracks from everything I've heard about him. Yes. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on because yeah, sure, I don't think yeah we'll still... circle back to Gary at some point in the evening. Yeah. I'm sure. So um, am I sure that wasn't Nick Nolte? I'm not sure that wasn't Nick Nolte. Anywho, let's watch the movie. <laughs> yes. Starting it now. to another episode of The Fire Pit. Once again, I am your interspersal host, editor, and chief of police, Tom. And I won't have any rush hour Rambo antics on my precinct. You got me? You're a loose cannon, but you get the job done. All right, so just a quick correction before we get into it to set the record straight. When Predator 2 came out, uh, we noted that it uh, did not exactly do well in the box office. However, it did not lose out to sibling rivalry. It was number four at the box office, losing out instead to Home Alone, Three Men and a Little Lady, and Dances with Wolves. Three films that were not at all slouches in, or slouches in the box office, and uh, films that... Uh, yeah, still on a lot of people's to watch list to this day. So, solid a film as Predator 2 was any other year, it might have done better numbers, might have got a little more love, but it just uh, it happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But again, it did not lose out to sibling rivalry. It wasn't even close. Sibling rivalry was way behind. So, again, apologies from the management. We do have a few announcements. Uh, you can now find us at our new location, firepit.podbean.com. Podbeam is a podcast hosting site uh, that's home for such shows as Talk Nerdy to Me and Critical Role with Matt Mercer. Uh, you can check out our past episodes, uh, which we've posted there, and keep updated on new episodes and stuff as they come out. Again, that's firepit.com dot podbean dot com we'll be posting uh that in descriptions as we go along and now i'm going to turn it over to dan who has some news for us um break out the cigars and brandy because we have our first bona fide subscriber that is not married to one of us related to one of us or a bot holy shit like this person could actually get the captcha on most websites because they're not a robot who who is this person do we have a name to go with this can we give them a shout out or uh well their name their name is peggy and they're a good friend of mine from online so they're <laughs> they are related to us but i shared our link when we finally put it up on our podcast uh site the other day 
I shared the link. She's listened to a few episodes. Um, oh, and she's still subscribed? Holy cow! <laughs> <laughs> so we might give her a shout out later in the uh, official podcast tonight. But um, I did want to say I have some actual legitimate constructive feedback if you guys were, are interested in hearing it. No, no we uh, hate yeah. constructive feedback. This is why we do this for ourselves. If anybody says anything negative about us, we're immediately going to go curl ourselves into a ball in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it was, she says she's enjoying it. So, uh, yeah. You know, All right, going. cool. And tell her that if she uh, subscribes to our Patreon, only $50 a month, she can get our exclusive content, which is, I'm sure we'll come up with something. Um. I, I will uh, autograph something and send it to her. Well, let her. You know, yeah. I'm the talent. Right. I did mention that, actually. She'll be the first to get one of our exclusive t shirts. She's mm. going to un- she's gonna unfriend me. But... <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, there's it's Gary. Hey, I'm going to see if Gary's on again. Uh, Still empty. Let me see. Gary, can you hear me? Wait, I think I see him in the background. He's, he's, I think I'm getting your video feed now, Josh. He's a. Uh, Gary. He's, uh, I am sharing my screen. No, it's still the back. Oh, he, there he is. The, Gary, Gary, get, get, you're, you're get, on the screen. Here, I'm going to. He's still looking know. for that ball. He's He's got something. He's, he's grabbed. What no, was he grabbing? Like, it's in his teeth. He's smiling big. You could see the, the, the fuzz of the ball in his teeth. It's. I, I'm hoping that's a it's fuzz. It's just a lot of, um. It's that, that thing's moving a lot. Are you sure it's, it's a ball? It's I chewing. Mean, He's he's he is doing a lot of chewing. That's ironic because um, I threw a baseball and he's chewing a tennis ball. That's I'm going um, to go ahead and give it to him. Good job, Gary. But uh, uh, yeah, that's fine. He's he's so, so. Can you tell us anything about this scene? He just threw up. Okay, I'm uh, just gonna go ahead and set that off to the side again. Oh oh oh, he's not wearing pants. Oh, we're getting a full view of Busey. Oh, okay, that's. All right, back to the film then. We'll, we'll, we'll check back with him in a bit. In the meantime, you can contact us at Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. at gmail.com. That's Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. at gmail.com. I'll write in the subject line whether you have comments, concerns, questions, statements, thoughts, and recommendations, or even corrections, and we'll get around to reading them when we can, and then never responding. That's Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and as always, good luck. Hey, we know Bill Paxton dies by a predator in this film. Yes. Because only predator is good enough to kill Bill Paxton. It's also the first time on this podcast that we're seeing one of the sci-fi monster uh, deaths of bill paxton it is remember he's the only one to be killed by a predator an alien and the terminator the holy trinity of bill paxton so we need to definitely have a moment of reflection whenever we get to his third and final death by a major movie monster did we lose did we lose bill paxton no we lost our rush hour rambo dude that's the line of the movie rush hour rambos i want to see that movie actually Tom, I just came up with the name for our uh, musical. Rush what? Hour Rambles. I'm already <laughs> writing the script. And there we were on the train. We were traveling down the line. And then the, everybody starts snapping. Boom, 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 boom. What People a time. <laughs> what a time. We had to make the very next line before the Rush Hour Rambles. We're gunning for the finish line with the rush. Our Our Rambo. Boom! We blew up the line. (laughs) I love how Dan is just cautiously quiet. I'm sandbagging this whole thing. (laughs) Look at him. He's being a rush. Our Rambo. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Do I sound better? Yeah. Yeah. All righty then. So, final thoughts. Uh, I'm. Uh, Nigel, do you want to start this off? Since I think I started it off last yeah, time. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. Um, I'll say some final thoughts. Uh, well, I'm gonna go back and say, yeah. 
Yeah, this is still the best Predator sequel, although that's not saying much. I have to say that while it's not as good as the first one, not by a mile, mm-hmm. um, it is remarkable how decent of a film it is considering all the restraints they had. I mean, four week shooting schedule, just handcuffed at every turn. You know, I've seen movies that had longer production schedules come out a hell of a lot worse. So that's kind of impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like I can... one of those things. It's it's like you appreciate how good of a movie it ha- it was, how good of something was, given the restraints. Yeah. Like, oh, this picture sucks, but the dude doesn't have any arms. So clearly, yeah. that's really good being painted by a guy with no arms. Yeah, right. It's like I said, I I still watching it. I haven't seen this all the way through in a while. So rewatching it and, and actually paying attention to it, not just using it as background noise. It definitely is like it's a drop in quality from the first one. I think it suffers from Jaws Two syndrome. Mm. Jaws Two isn't necessarily a bad film, but it is not up to par from Jaws One. And because Jaws One, Spielberg, you know, they had so many problems with the mechanical shark that they had no choice but to limit how much they could use it. So mm. that actually added to the movie. That played to the movie's strengths, as the fact that you couldn't see the shark. And Jaws 2, because they didn't have near the problems with it, and because it was a sequel and they got to ramp up the stuff in the sequel, it's like, they got to show the shark more. We got to show the shark more. So they did, and it kind of lost its effectiveness. Yeah. So, and then this movie has the same problem where, like Josh mentioned earlier, as we were watching, the Predator feels more menacing in the first one. And I don't know if it's because they're outside in a jungle where there's no backup and there's no help. I don't know if it's the fact that they established early in the movie that Arnold's group of GI Joes is like the baddest of the badass of the U S army. Mm-hmm. So, and then the predator just starts mowing through them like nothing. Yeah. Um, I think didn't that, they try I, to do something like that in this one too. Like his team was one of the best teams. And, that's, <laughs> and that was the whole contention on bringing on uh, Bill Paxton's character. Yeah, but well, honestly, outside of the scene, honestly, outside of the scene where Danny Glover drives the car through the hail of gunfire and then goes behind the, the gangsters and mows them down with a shotgun and then do, does all that, Danny Glover is actually the only established quote unquote badass in this movie. Whereas, like, the first movie, Arnold's team goes into the jungle and they go to the, um, um, gorillas base or whatever and they just they wipe the floor with them they just whoop their ass you know um and go through effortlessly like oh yeah it's like every single other character got their day in the sun so to speak like you can see why is jesse ventura's character awesome this is why why is the native american character guy awesome this is why you know why is this guy awesome because yeah Yeah, and they do they make a point to show you every single character and then they do they and like Dylan, the um, uh, Carl Urban's character, not Carl Urban, my bad. Carl Weathers, <laughs> Carl Weathers, his character, uh, Dylan. Just say you know, Apollo Creed. Yeah, Apollo Creed, Carl Weathers, whatever you want to call him. It, you know, they establish him as a badass, as a former badass, and all that. And they they have a they, they have a big scene in Predator One that establishes Arnold's team as just badasses, just yeah. mows them down, mows down the enemies, goes through them with all the, everyone gets a one-liner, you know, Arnold's a whole stick around. And Jesse Ventura's like, I ain't got time to bleed. Mm-hmm. Like, they all get a badass one-liner, they all get a cool moment to show that they're fucking awesome, and then the Predator comes in and mows through them, and that's what makes the Predator so menacing, is that these American badasses are getting absolutely shellacked by this alien. So and that was definitely at the height of like Schwarzenegger's a badass thing. I mean, you could yeah. clear like I think that was literally his peak was Predator. Like he did movies after that, but nothing. I don't know. Okay, no, I, think Terminator, Terminator I think Terminator. I think Terminator. Terminator, Terminator two. Is, two think, yeah. Peak. Terminator yeah, two this... is probably his peak. But this was. I would say this was one of the peaks. Like this was his peak at the time. Every, yeah. Like even Total Recall couldn't even come close to uh Mm-hmm. Predator. Yeah, well, Predator, Predator was one of those movies that established Schwarzenegger as a bona fide action star. Like, yeah, he, even he, after Commando. Yeah. And so I'm just saying that, that but the Predator 1 did make a good point of showing Arnold's team as badasses, and therefore the threat of the Predator is greater in Predator 1 because mm-hmm. those guys are all, the, the characters are established as being 
top notch, best of the best badasses. There's a reason why at the beginning of the movie, the, the United States sends them into the jungle. But this movie, honestly, outside of that scene with Danny Glover, they don't really do a whole lot to establish that Danny Glover's team is full of badasses. It's not like they're SWAT team guys or mm -hmm. anything like that. Yeah, they're they're in a war zone because they're fighting the war on drugs and all that. But they they do more to show the gang members that the Predator's hunting are more badasses than the cops, you know. I think that's the draw of this. Like, now you're in a situation that is the worst situation. It is yeah. absolute war. It's like, and then suddenly, how could it get worse? A Predator shows up. I think they, they did the right thing. Like, the natural progression for the story to go, if, like, you're going to do a sequel is, yeah, it kind of makes sense to go from the jungle to the city. You know, the, the, yeah. the, the threat's a little greater. So the escalation, I can, I can get it. I think they made the right call with moving the Predator to the city. I just think that there's some miscues that they have in the sequel in, this mo in Predator 2 that kind of shows the Predator to be not as menacing as it was in the first one. Not saying it's not, because the Predator still mows through everybody. But like the beginning, that opening shootout, I think the cops kill one gang member before Danny Glover shows up. But the gang members are like killing cops left and right, or at least <laughs> shooting them down. Shooting yeah. him down. So it's establishing the cop or the the gang members are more badass than the cops. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that why in that scene the predator targets them. Well, I was thinking about this too. Yeah. It's I mean you had Schwarzenegger then they were the personification of the action films of the eighties. These muscle yep. supermen. Um, this one, Predator Two, is a personification of the underdog, everyman cop. The John McClane. The John McClane. Yeah, the Mo yeah. It was essentially Murtaugh versus Predator, whereas the first one was Commando versus Predator. Yeah. It's, it's they threw it into a a cliche, a cop cliche, and just had fun with it. Yeah, yeah. Like I think I said, we all can agree that Schwarzenegger's character is more of a badass than Danny Glover's character. Well, of course he was. But that was the thing. That was the whole appeal. He was the underdog from the beginning. He was absolutely yeah. John McClane. Well, that was that was the, the yeah that was the John McClane mold. Was the everyman kind of character that looks vulnerable. That's not nearly as built or muscular as Schwarzenegger. That was older, you know, because mm -hmm. um, Schwarzenegger was in his thirties when he made Predator, whereas Danny Glover is obviously in his forties when he makes Predator yeah. Two. I'm just saying that it it just. I don't think this movie is a bad movie. It's, it's definitely, I, I would put this, if we were to do our category of underrated sequels to good movies, I would put this down as an underrated sequel. I don't think it's, as, and I don't think it's worthy of, it's like, I think it only has like a 29% on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's a little bit better than that. Cause I, it should be, you know, I, uh, yeah. Let me well, also keep quick, in yeah. mind. We, we know how fickle critics are. It isn't its predecessor. So clearly it's going to be rated low. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not as good as Predator 1. It's not as good as Predator 1. No, I'm not making an argument saying that it's just as good or as good as Predator 1 because I didn't say that about Jaws 2 either. Jaws 2 is not as good as Jaws 1. It's nowhere near as good. Yeah. Um, in fact, Jaws is one of those movies where I feel doesn't need a sequel, never needed a sequel. No, no. Um, but Jaws 2 is a decent film. You can watch it and enjoy it, but it's one, it's an unnecessary sequel. And two, it's not as good as Jaws 1. I feel the... I feel somewhat similar about this one. I feel that the Predator is more of a franchise-friendly kind of a, a film than Jaws was, even though Predator 1 did have a definitive beginning and an end. Like, he takes out the Predator. At the, well, he doesn't take it out. He incapacitates it, and it commits suicide by nuclear explosion, I think. But Yeah, yeah whereas Roger Murtaugh here, he actually killed the Predator. Yeah, he actually killed mm -hmm. it. But the, Predator was already, but the Predator was also weakened by the time he killed it. Remember, I mean... The Gary Busey's special forces guys didn't he kill did, it. He but did they, use his fire extinguisher on him. And they did damage it a little <laughs> bit. They, they did damage it a little bit. So I'm just saying it, it's after watching the other Predator movies before we watch this one, other than the first one, I'm starting to see a pattern in all the Predator movies. And I know it's not the spiritual guy that tries to make spiritual sense of the Predator. It's missed opportunities in storytelling. Yeah. All the other Predator sequels, with the exception of the first one, keep missing the mark on just getting a cohesive story out there. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, miss like I, I noticed in Predators, the one where they, they the humans get captured and get put on like a game planet or whatever. They have moments where they're showing like there's a good group of predators and a bad group of predators. Yeah. But they but they dump they dump the good predators really quickly and then just go straight to the evil predators versus the humans. 
And I thought that was a wasted opportunity. And then they do the same thing in the sequel, The Predator. They do the like the movie that just came out last last winter. It's another one where they they kind of establish that there's good predators and bad predators, or at least honorable ones. And then they're like basically hunters versus poachers. Yeah, and then yeah. they just they dispatch the good predators really quickly as soon as they the bad predators are come in, they they kill the good predator. So the good predator can't help the humans at all. And can't, doesn't then they don't do anything with that story. And you're like it's another wasted opportunity. And this movie is kind of another one of those. I see why this, I like the setting. I like the idea for the story, but I think they yeah. just missed a few cues. The Man. predator is a perfect franchise, you know, villain too, because it's the villain and the, the antagonist and the protagonist can change with every single movie. Mm-hmm. And there's yeah. plenty of lore to build the characters that you've never met up. Yeah. But they did like, the right thing with the predator. Like they built on the predator's lore yeah. On this one, a lot. Oh, yeah. Like almost, almost all the iconic weapons that we think of with the Predator, a lot of them came from this movie. Some of them came from the first one. The first one, all they had was he had the vision, the cloaking device, his arm blades, and his um, I think that was it. Sure. Yeah, the shoulder yeah. cannon, and he could mimic the speech. He could do the mimic, the speech mimicking. And then this one, he got the speech mimicking. He cycles through different visions on his his visor or his mask, mm-hmm. and he's got the spear. And the little like shrapnel bullet things, shurikens he could shoot out of his wrist. He's got the obviously the the plasma caster, the gun on the shoulder, the net um, gun too. Yeah, and then the disc. He's got the disc. Yeah. You know, and then obviously the cloaking device and all this stuff too. So and when they show the ship and they show all the different alien skulls, they establish the lore that this is a race of hunters. This is a race of mm-hmm. of beings that hunt other beings for sport. So they did a good job in this movie of like furthering the lore of the predator. I just feel like they just missed a few other cues well so that's, also that's, it could be because of the short um production uh, oh that was a well, well th- but, we, I mean, all acknowledge there was so much to this film that if they'd given a little more time could have been fleshed out there was something oh, yeah. here oh yeah very I, easily I, I think i i think we stumbled upon something you were mentioning like there's so much to the predator uh, so John, that, i think that's a problem in these first this one the first one and this one the first one was your 80s action vietnam war parable and an 80s serial killer Jason Voorhees shows up. This one was a 90s everyman cop war on drugs film and space Jason Voorhees shows up and now mm-hmm. Predator there, it was a Predator showing up in a, a genre film an action genre, a cop genre. Now Predator is its own genre so now you need a Predator interrupting a Predator film and no one thinks like throw Predator versus say I don't know, a War on Terror film or uh, Fast and the Furious film, if, like they should, whatever popular is now. It they treat it like its own genre, and that's that's why this one, even though it's faulted, it's still enjoyable. The, the, mm-hmm. the current yeah. ones aren't. <laughs> oh yeah, God. yeah, they're they're not. They're or or like I've lost count how many times I've gone back and rewatched Predator One or gone back and rewatched Predator Two. The other sequels. This week was the first time I've seen them more than twice because I had, I was just rewatching them just for this movie, just so I could get some context of what they've done with the Predator franchise since this movie came out. Spoiler yeah. alert, not much. But <laughs> like, like even the Alien versus Predator films, just like, well, you know, we were talking a few weeks ago during Pathfinder, you have a movie with Batman and a movie with Superman. How did you fuck that up? And then DC said, hold my beer. Mm-hmm. And well, you have a movie with the Alien and Predator. You're finally putting those two alien monsters together and how are you going to mess this up oh they found a way yeah. <laughs> they, they found a way they found a way to make you not care <laughs> the first one's at least watchable i only got a third of the way through avp2 before i just had turned it off like i don't need this i don't need i don't need any more references for what i'm doing on sunday night i'm i just turned it off and started watching something else yeah um, if i remember i don't even think i made it a halfway through that one and I know, like, when I was, I, I've seen them all, and I'd have to say, uh, it's a toss-up between Predators and Predator 2 is my favorite Predator sequel. I'll give Predators credit for at least trying to do yeah, something it was, a little yeah, bit It was different. like a return to formula. It's like, let's put them in a jungle, uh, let's put an elite group of something, in which this case was bad guys. So it, it, was, it, it was enough of the original formula mixed with a new formula, plus Danny Trejo. I forgot he was in that movie. Yeah, and Danny uh, uh, um, Topher Grace too. Topher Grace, yeah. Did, was Michelle Art Rodriguez in that one? I don't 
think so. But someone like her's in it. She played yeah. the bad the badass Israeli sniper or whatever. Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, yeah, Lawrence Fishburne's in it. Who's yeah. heavily established or not established? Um, it's insinuated that he, if he's not Danny Glover's character from the uh, Predator Two, he's a um, pistache of him. Like his backstory fits kind of Danny Glover's character. He's, he's kind of a mix between Danny Glover and Arnold Schwarzenegger's character. Apparently, apparently that that scene was written for Arnold in mind, and Arnold turned it down because oh, that would have been awesome. Yeah, well, I think at the time they were filming, he was either still governor at the time or. It was just coming was just coming off being governor of California and just wasn't like uh no I'm good. Can't blame him. Yeah, but I'd have to say it's a toss up between that that one and this one. I like Predator too, but again, it's like for my final thoughts, I guess I'll go it next. I, I'd have to say it is definitely an enjoyable movie. Flawed, but enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um I really doesn't have anything that really stands out with it. There's nothing like I mean, beyond some of the lore. Like I, I do, they they do add to the Predator lore, which I'll give them that. Yeah. But they they do it in like a very '90s way of adding to the lore. They add to it without saying anything. What I did like is they added to the lore without a bunch of needless exposition. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I mean. They did it without the necessary exposition. Yeah. They you did show the show you, don't show don't yeah, tell. The, the iconography behind it. You see the skull, so you know that they hunt more than just humans. We're not their you know deer hunting type of thing. There's yeah. more than one there, so clearly it's some kind of a test. It leaves so much room for speculation, yeah. which is honestly uh, something I miss in modern cinema. You know, yeah. like mm-hmm. also apparently this was a the, there's a, the, a fan theory going around amongst the you know the predator fan community or the the, the, the community of this particular genre or franchise. Uh, one of the f- fan theories is that this predator in this movie is younger and less experienced than the predator that hunted Arnold's group because he uses more weapons. Uh, could be, could yeah. be. <laughs> Could be, oh, I did, didn't I joke that he was a 13 year old? Yeah, yeah, like they were saying that this predator is younger because he uses more weapons and he hunt, he hunts oh. easier he hunts easier targets, whereas the predator from the first one used less weapons and hunted special forces like army rangers. So with guns and especially like like Jesse Ventura's character with the big ass minigun and all that, he like he hunted special forces. Mm-hmm. But he soldiers. had more places to hide in that film. This one he was he had the buildings, yeah, but he was a little more exposed in this one. So it's, it's, maybe, a, it's just well, a fan. Didn't, they, didn't fan they establish theory. in later movies, and again, not maintaining canon in any way, that they basically go hunt on Earth as kind of a kind of a proving ground for the themselves. That's mm-hmm. why the one went out. Like they they send them out to basically get their first kill and then they come back home as full predators, so to speak. Yeah, like, I, th- I think so. Uh, AVP one also mentions that humans are just a warm up hunt for predators and that yeah. you know the, the aliens are their more worthy prey, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, I think that at one point they kind of hinted at the fact that they created them before the alien lore came in and said, "No, we were created by a robot." Yeah, <laughs> but but yeah. anywho, continuing on. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to get into that franchise yet. No, no. My no. Uh, to, get, to finish off my final thoughts, I'd say it's like this was definitely. I remember loving this film when I was younger because it came out in '90. I probably didn't really get into my Alien and Predator kick until like the mid '90s when I was, you know, probably approaching my teen years. Mm-hmm. But I remember seeing this one and I remember really enjoying it, you know, because obviously I didn't have the adult lens to look at it through. For me, it was just blood, guts, and bullets, and the occasional boob. Now, it was like, I really don't have anything epic to say about this film. It did, it's, It is what it is, you know? On the surface, everything you see, it is what this movie is. Like, there's no underlying message. There's no overarching thought that this is trying to, to portray. It's just a movie about a cop trying to hunt a predator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know? Just, it's kind of funny that... You know, this sequel kind of falls short and RoboCop 2 kind of falls short from RoboCop 1. But then like Terminator 2 is usually argued as being just as good, if not better than the first one. And Aliens is usually argued as being just as good, if not better than the first one. And what are, the mis- what are the missing components? No James Cameron. So like... <laughs> well, look at Aliens. There's there's debate which one's better, Alien or Aliens, but they are Alien. fundamentally different movies. So same with Terminator and Terminator Two. Terminator yeah. and Terminator Two are different movies altogether. Terminator is more of a slasher film, and Terminator Two is more of action. Yeah, you know, more, definitely more of an action film. Terminator One is definitely a 
an 80s slasher film with just a time traveling cyborg as the bad guy yeah. instead of a guy it's in a, a hockey more of a more of a horror film too mm-hmm. yeah and, and so is alien alien's definitely a sci-fi horror film yeah. aliens aliens is sci-fi action horror yeah but yeah it's like this movie is what it is i think that's the best thing i can come to say as my final thought predator 2 is what it is it is yeah. a predator in the city you know I mean, the whole predator the whole, in the city. The whole we've been on the you know we're on the road to Independence Day. Next week is Independence Day. Mm-hmm. Spoiler spoiler alert. Um, but no, next week is Independence Day. We're, we've been on the road for it, and this is the quote unquote worst movie we've seen since yeah. starting the road to Independence Day, and it's still not that bad. No, no, no. It's, yeah. it's it's definitely the bottom of the rung on the movies we've seen so far. But it's not the it's not the worst we've seen since we started this podcast. No, no, no. no, no. That's still Pathfinders. Path is nothing's mm-hmm. beaten Pathfinder yet. Cause mm-hmm. as I said, you know, doom was a bad movie too, but doom was like enjoyable, bad. Like we still had a lot of fun, a, oh, lot, yeah. of, a lot of laughs and all that about doom. It's one of those movies where <laughs> you can enjoy it. If you don't look too deeply, it is what it is. Again, that's another movie. It's like that movie is what it is on the surface. It doesn't have anything, any deeper meaning to it. Yeah. And yeah, but Pathfinder was just one of those movies where, like it was a chore to get through. It was like, oh my god, how what is time anymore? When does this movie end? You In know. fact, was no, we spent the entirety of that film talking about everything but that film. Yeah, yeah. My friend mentioned that she said that you guys talked about everything but the movie, and then she goes, "But then I've seen that movie, and I kind of understand why you guys only talked about other stuff." Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think we had our DC EU versus MCU debate there. We did. We were yes, debating. We, we were we were debating why Batman v Superman isn't as good as like Captain America: Civil War. It's, you know, yeah. And as we were supposed to be watching, <laughs> we, you can definitely tell. Like she said, she goes, "You guys almost sounded like you you guys would rather have been watching Captain America three And I'm like, "We would have rather been watching Captain America three But that's, yeah. I mean, but so as yeah, as low as this film was on our totem pole, this was still a far far better because we're still talking about this film, as, yeah. and even as we were watching. And yeah. just as my final thoughts, everything you guys have said, I agree with. 10 times over just looking at it too i guess i'll add a technical side of it just honestly i know this film was made like right at the 90s but it feels like a 90s film just in how it was cut and edited and shot it just it was it felt like the template that terminator 2 would follow but inevitably do better just an act more actiony. Uh, the editing just was. We talked about that earlier. Just if they had had more time to film and edit, it could have been a much better, much tighter film. The production value could have been much oh, yeah. better. I think if they would have spent twice the amount of time filming and editing, they mm. could have had a lot better re- reshots. Like there was that one scene where he's running through the meat locker. I just mm. that felt like a first take. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it it was like it was like a B roll footage, but mm. it felt like a first take. Like you could have done something. Like I feel like a better or not a better director, but if you had more times, be like, you know what? I don't like the way the meat is swinging. Yeah. Mm. Apparently, you know? one of the things I was just I was reading while we were talking here, one of the rumors I hear is one of the things Arnold didn't like. One of the script is apparently the Gary Busey character was supposed to be for Arnold, and really? but they don't. But he the character's not changed at all. And Arnold felt like the character of Dutch from the first one wouldn't have been as crazy as Gary Busey's character is in this one. He wouldn't have been as as gung ho about going after this thing without any kind of plan, really, without any kind of like because Arnold been like, I guess one of Arnold's questions was like, well, Dutch saw this thing up close. Uh, he didn't he didn't care for the character. That's just a rumor. I'm not sure. But apparently Arnold it. Arnold didn't like the script and he didn't like the director. And I don't know if going back and doing rewrites and maybe trying to get a script that Arnold would have liked may have strengthened the movie. Cause I, I think Arnold's presence is definitely, or lack of presence is definitely felt in this film. Sure. Oh, but I, th- I think him, them not having Arnold made kind of help force it into being a different film from yeah. the first one. So yeah, that, I think that's true. That's helped. very true. And I honestly like Danny Glover's character, his hunt for the Predator. I thought that was far more earned in this film than Arnold's was. Because the whole film, you know for a fact, 
Danny Glover is the underdog. He is climbing a hell of a mountain mm -hmm. to get to Predator. So everything he's doing is earned. That when he has to like chop off the Predator's arm, I yeah, felt you better behind that journey but for him. Whereas also, it was you, you, Danny Glover's character feels more vulnerable. Like I guess even as badass as the predator was in the first one, you don't really feel that Arnold's not going to come out on top of their fight when they show down in the last act of the movie. Mm -hmm. But there were moments like, I remember the first time I ever saw this movie, there's moments in the film where you really do feel like this guy's going to kill Danny Glover at any second. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you looking at it. I mean, the only way Dan or Danny Glover's character, which, what was the name of his character in this movie? <laughs> not, not Roger Murtaugh. Not, Mar not Roger <laughs> not Murtaugh. No, it's his actual, that was his name. Harrigan. His name was Lieutenant, not Roger Murtaugh. Yeah, yeah Lieutenant, Lieutenant Harrigan. Mike Harrigan. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like he won by slowly chipping away at him. Yeah. You know, and he didn't do all the chipping either, but he did a majority. Like toe to toe, he never would have been able to beat him. For one, really, he didn't have any damage taken until he gets shotgunned to the chest by Danny Glover's character. So yeah. Danny Glover did all of the damage to the Predator in this movie. Mm -hmm. From cutting off his arm, shot, shotgunning him into the chest, cutting him down the center. That's really, am I wrong in saying that's all the damage that was taken to him? No, but, you're not wrong. Because, I mean, even in the uh, subway scene where Bill Paxton is essentially shooting in point blank range, he can't, he ain't got nothing done to him. Yeah. yeah, because in the first one, they did damage to him because they had made the whole thing. It's like, it's his blood. It's like, if it bleeds, you we know. We can kill it. Can, yeah. If so it bleeds, in this one, he, he did all the damage to him, and he slowly chipped away at him until he was able to beat him. But you, yeah. you know for a fact, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, his character would not have beaten the Predator. Same right. With, you know, but, you know, watching the first one, you know, Arnold probably could have, done a lot better than Danny Glover's character. Although the they, they show in the first one too, that toe to toe, the predator whipped the shit out of Arnold. Like when they, did. they do square off predator man handles him. Like, so I, I'm just saying, I, I think both movies have their charm. I don't, I think the, the first one's a little better. It's got a little more star power behind it. I think it's a little more tense in some scenes. And I think they do a good job in the first one of establishing why the predator's hunting this particular group of people. As opposed to this one, they do a good job of establishing the lore of the Predator. I thought that was really good. Mm -hmm. And they do a much better job of, I agree with you, Josh, of making Danny Glover's character more of the underdog than Arnold Schwarzenegger's character. Um, they determine. To stamp, they trample all over your final thoughts there, Tom. But uh, did you have anything else on yours? No, that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah this, um, you guys, uh, I think we hit all the notes on this one. It's not as good of a film as I remembered it. I had very fond memories, but it's Same. it's still decent. It's it's better than all the other Predators by a long shot. Not saying much there, but I, I'd still watch this again. End of the day. And honestly, yeah. I feel like I don't think this would have been as drastic a change as or as as good a sequel as Terminator 2 to Terminator would have been, but I felt like with a little bit more attention and a little bit more time, it could have been a much better sequel. I mean, it had all all the leavings there of being a better sequel. It yeah, could it, have been. It followed it followed the Alien and Terminator formula that they they amped the set or they ramped up the the stakes. They uh, they changed the setting just a little bit to make it feel fresh and you know they they added some things to it but it just kind of just fell short and i think a lot of the faults of this movie aren't the movies aren't the fault of the writers or the directors it's just the fault effect that they have four weeks to shoot this film and edit it that's just like you said it's a senior that's a senior project that doesn't sound yeah. like a major motion picture no no and they, they that they were able to make this out of that time frame just speaks volumes about the quality of the team and the actors and everyone that were involved so mm. i i salute you uh not murtock and <laughs> <laughs> you worked with what you had and you still got through the end of the day you are the underdog hero of this film yeah yes yeah stephen hopkins definitely the director of this film did a great job with what he had given to him like they would they i mean the fact that he had to shoot a major motion picture in four weeks and edit it just mm -hmm. that's kind of amazing i mean that's just unheard of especially a movie of this scope size and caliber i i i can't imagine today if you were trying to establish a franchise making your movie that so yeah if this movie was made today i think it would have been 
probably worse than this movie it came out to be. Uh, considering this one was just a few steps above made for TV for for what it was, yeah, it, God only knows. But thankfully, we're going to follow uh, Stephen Baldwin onto that helicopter and travel to our next film where he gets another shot at getting some aliens. Alongside the, the ever-famous Will Smith. Yes. yes. In ladies, and, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the road to Independence Day hits its final stop next week on Independence Day. ID4, yes. the 1996 summer blockbuster starring Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum. Uh, very much looking forward to that. Uh, Josh was actually the one that proposed the idea that we get to Independence Day You're by, welcome. July 3rd, by July 3rd. And Tom and I were immediately on board. And this has just been fun. And actually, it ended up being a stroke of genius because it's helped mm -hmm. us really get our rhythm on this podcast going. Mm -hmm. So definitely looking forward to the Road to Independence Day. Yeah. And going forward, I think we're going to start uh, becoming more formulaic in that regard. Not in the bad mm -hmm. way. But no, uh, no, I think no. uh, going forward, we're going to try to find a uh, six degrees of and find a road to, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're just going to be bouncing back and or doing that. But we're going to have a series of movies. So expect a uh, another episode similar to the one where we was doing our uh, thesis. Sees, says, says, <laughs> thesis. 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 I don't know. I think know. it's just thesis. Um, it's, I think I, I told like you that. Yeah, you, <laughs> you did, but, you know. But, uh. So Thank expect you, another interim episode between here and and uh, our first uh, our first uh, episode of the road to whatever it's going to be, and we'll have a better name for it. I promise. Dan, <laughs> get on that. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll get it. I'll get on that. I think it was I the one that came up with Road to Independence Day. I think because um, we didn't want to do March two. Yeah, I was I was going to yeah. call it March to Independence Day, and then um, current events told me that March might be a bad idea. So uh, road, to, yeah, road to Independence Day works. Um, we're currently batting some ideas around for our next group of movies. But for right now, we will be focused on next week. Uh, like I said, Independence Day. Very yeah. much looking forward don't, to that movie. Definitely fond, don't want to do anything. memories of that movie. So you don't want to take anything from the spotlight on that one. No, sir. And speaking of movies that are better than their original, or the, where the original is better than the sequel, so, uh, you know, I was yeah. thinking about that too. I'll, I'll talk more about it next week. But how memorable is Independence Day, and how forgettable is Independence Day Two? Like, well, just well, like amazing contrast of those two films. It's a tragedy. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was a movie that was like eighteen years too late. Yes. So join us next week as the road to Independence Day hits its final stop on Independence Day, and until then. I've been Dan. I've been Josh. I've been Tom. Special shout out to Sync Lounge and Plex for helping us uh, have this uh, simultaneous viewing. And please look for our podcast at firepit.podbean.com. Yes, this has been a Curtain Call Entertainment LLC production. And thank you for joining and see you next time. Good night. You know what I just realized? I got Gary Busey back on the line. That's not actually Gary Busey. It is oh. just a golden retriever. Oh, you know, it's it's the hair. That's what the, and the teeth and the teeth uh, and the teeth and the 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 constant licking of the genitals. I just that uh, kind of explains why the pants aren't on. Yeah, yeah. That's so. the wrong. You know what? That's not even Zoom. I've got a live stream to a dude's a random dude's uh apartment so much more sense so gary yeah, if that... you listen i apologize i hope you got the sugar at least <laughs> <laughs>